Today, I'm going to be cutting a peplum top. It's actually a two, a double layer peplum top, the one that stands. Then it has a fringe here. So, first I'm going to be starting by cutting the, the breast cut. The breast cut is actually this type of straight breast cut. This one that I'm putting on now. A straight one, that's what I'm going to be using for this blouse. So, first, I start by opening out my fabric. As you can see, this cloth is actually patterned. So, I think I should make Okay, let's make part, use of this part for the top. That's for this top part. So you fold your fabric into two. In determining how to fold your fabric, all you have to do is, is divide the bust into four, then add five inches. Then you will know how to fold your fabric so you don't waste it. And for this case, the bust is 38. So when you divide 38 into 4, we've got 9 and half, roughly 10. Then you add 5 inches. That's 9. 1, 2, 3, 4. 14 plus the half inch will remove that's 15. In order for you to be sure and to be safe, you can just leave it at 16. Sometimes I even make use of 17 because I don't want any problem. So I'll leave it at 17 inch. So you can fold your fabric at 17 inch. So you have enough allowance inside in case. The person is fat, gets fat, or whatever. So you fold it out. First, you start by measuring what is the half cut of the, uh, the blouse, where do you want the blouse to be. And to determine that, first of all, you, you make use of your, your, your breast point. This is your breast point, that's your nipple. Then under the bust, then this is the half cut. For this peplum that I'm going to be doing, it's not going to be down like this because this one is actually on top of my navel. So it's going to be like here. So maybe like 3 in or 2 inches after the underbust. So her breast point is um, 11.15. So for that, you notice I've not measured the shoulder. I just want to mark out my lines first 11 that is her her breast point 11 that is the nipple the nipple is 11 then the 15 is here the 15 is here that's under the bust i can just use my ruler to mark it out to have a straight line The next thing, I'll add 3 inches to this down. Like I told you in the beginning, I want it, the cut to be here. Just a little bit after the, the under the bust. So 3 inches. To get this middle part, that's the nipple to nipple, to get it, I'm going to be making use of 4 inches for this middle part. Uh, 
I'll make use of four inches here. Four inches. Join my lines. Then for this part, I'll measure one inch. This one inch is actually the dot. One inch from here, that is the down part. Okay. Then for this part, you take another one inch. All these one inches that I'm taking is for the dart. You know, in that normally you normally hold it when you are making that. So for breast cut, you, you are reducing this one inch. It's like the dart. That is why I'm doing it. Then for this up part, you take one inch from this right side. See one inches from this right side. Then for this left, you take half half inch. This is like that. You know when you are showing your normal princess cut, you cut out a part of it as the that. So this is it. So now, what I'm going to be doing, this is the under bust. But sorry, this is the breast point. This is the breast point and this is the under bust. This is just the allowance. That's where the peplum will be. So now, this is my one inch of the dart that I took. I'm going to be t t drawing a line here to the breast point when i get here from here i'll now draw another line it's, it's not going to be a straight line because it's curved i'll now draw the line like this to join this one inch that is here then for this one inch i'm going to be taking this one inch to i'll take it like this to this breast point then from here it will now face this part like this to this half inch so that's like the dart now so that's what i'm gonna be doing and i don't want to make use of i don't want to make use of ruler so i'm gonna be using my hand since it's not a straight line See, this is the under post. Then you now curve, you make a curve like a little curve, shouldn't be sharp because you don't want sharp edges on it. You just go like this. I hope this chalk is obvious. Then, for this half inch, you take it like this too. Uh, sorry for this one inch of the down part. Let me use this white chalk. Now let me cut out this middle part to actually show you the like I told you before you see this part now. This is like that that you are cutting your normal that now. That part that you cut out. So 
So you see. So now to get your full body measurement, that is this full part, body measurement, you take this middle part, you place it on it like this. Make sure your lines are on top of each other. Then you measure. So now, I'm going to be starting now with the shoulder. Back to my measurement. My shoulder is 15. 15 divided by 2, that is 7 and half. You place your tape on it like this. You have 7 and half. No, this chalk is not obvious. 7 and half. I normally do 2 inches for my allowance. Then you measure nine inches from here. You can use it. That is for your arm pole. So make use of it. So it won't be too big by the time you you trim it. You rule your line like this. And you make your curve that is for your armhole let's draw a curve like this then for your boss like i said initially getting your boss measurement you divide the measurement into four for this case i have 38 you can divide by just folding your tape into four if you are not very good at mathematics, you see, you have nine and a half. So you take your tape and put it on the, the nipple measurement. That was the breast point. You mark and then add your allowance. For this, I'm going to be doing four inches. And I always like putting enough allowance because I don't want to be cut on our way. Then for the underbust measurement, you actually measure the underbust when you are taking your measurement. For the underbust measurement, what I have here is 32. So 32 divided by 4. That's 16. 16 divided by 2. That's 8. You take your 8 inches, you put it here. You measure. You are sorry, you mark. Use for this case, you can use 4 inches. You know, initially I used 4 inches for this up part. But for this down, I want to make use of 3.5. Then, anytime you are making a peplos, if the cut is not going to be directly under your bust, if you know it's going to be down a little bit, make sure you measure, you take your measurement when you are measuring the person. You put your measurement here, your tape here. This is under the bust. Then you bring it down to where you want your peplum cut to be. When you get to where you want your peplum cut to be, you hold it and you take your tape. Because this is not actually the tummy. So you take your tape and put it at that point like this. Make sure you put it at that point. That's where you want your cut to be. That is what will give your cut a very good cut. You put it at that exact point where you want the cut to be. And you measure what you want. With that, you get a very good fitting for your peplum. So for this case, her um, under boss was 32. That's the tummy. That's this place. Is 34. Usually, most times you can just add two inches, but it's always good for you to measure. So, 34 that is 17 divided by.
by two. It's always good to measure too, so that everything will just be accurate. Don't use assumptions. That's eight and a half. Then I'll still make use of that's my three and a half inches. So now my lines now. I'll take it here like this and draw to this point. This breast cut is really simple. If you are a beginner, it is very simple and you do it, you get it. It is really easy. I want you to try it out. And you try it out. So you rule it. I want you to try out this um, breast cut. If you try it out, I want you to snap a picture of it. Now I'm going to be cutting it out. I want you to snap a picture of it. Send it to my DM on Facebook at Stylish Niger. Tell me if you have any question, anything, any question, if you have any, any difficulty. Just tell me. Send me a message on Facebook or on Instagram at Stylish Niger. You can still go to my website, stylishniger.com. Just send me a message. Tell me if you have any problem. Tell me. I will answer you. Okay, so this is the, you can see, this is the, the middle part. So now I'm going to be making, using this to cut out the back part. See, you know, you, you notice that, like I told you initially, that this cut is a patterned cloth. That is the mistake most people, they normally make. The, by the time they turn the fabric, they will not remember to follow the pattern. So this now, I'm going to be turning it to get to make sure that the back part and the front part is going to be the same. But actually for this, um, for this style, I don't really need to worry because I'm going to be putting a lace here on one side. Then I'll use raw silk for this other part. Then I'll now put a fringe here. And that fringe I'm going to be using crinoline because I want it to like have curves on it like this. I'm going to be using crinoline on it. I'll show you how to fix it. Crinoline, they are really good for peplum these days. It makes all this peplum to stand and it will be very fine. I'm going to be showing you other things. You can watch another of my videos of how to pad, how to actually pad your, how to actually pad your peplum. You can go to my channel, you can watch it. That's if you are the type, if, you, if your customer wants all this peplum that stands. Some people, they don't actually, like this one I'm wearing, now this one is just normal one, it's not a standing one. It's not padded. It's just, I just use hair stay for it. But the ones that are standing, you use crinoline and the peplum will really stand very well. So for this fringe on the side, I'm going to be using crinoline. So I'll show you how to place it on this video. As you can see, all the patterns, they are in place for this video. Let me shift. They are in place. But the front part of this dress, I'm going to be covering it up though. So you cut. You make you leave your allowance. You leave your allowance for this one. I'm using two inches for, as for my allowance. That's that two inches. That is for your zip allowance. Always remember to slant your your shoulder by one half an inch. Sometimes you can you can even slant it after taking the measurement of the the neck. Like I told you, I said two inch. So this part I'm gonna be cutting off this part. Another way. If you are, you are always having problem with your zip, the zip bulging out. If you are having problem with zip bulging out, there's a little secret that I normally do. When you get to this middle part, this middle part of your, that is the under bust. Just, you know this part initially, I told you two and a half. I, sorry, I told you two inches. For this middle part, you reduce it. You can make use of one and a half 
for the that's the center part make use of mark it like one and a half one and a half here this one was two inches one and a half here then one and a half then then you continue with your two inches up here you continue with your two inches up here so what you're gonna be doing is you see you you, you take your zip allowance like this you can see this part now is inside now bring it like this so with this the zip allowance is not straight so with this you won't have that bulging zip problem at the back you see it's like a curve you won't have that bulging zip problem and when you are fixing the zip make sure you still fix it along like that then you take a new notch for the zip allowance then for this middle part to cut it all you have to do is remove the middle part come like this you take your chalk you mark it here you just bend mark it then you come down here and mark then you join your lines like this make it straight like this. it's not straight or it's not straight it's slanty like this or else you have a bulging back I'm supposed to read on the reverse of the fabric. So this is it. This is the back. And this is the front. The back this is the front so what i'm gonna be doing now is i'm gonna cut my lining this is my lining i have hair stay and gum stay to iron on it then my chest part to iron for the the middle part of this dress now iron on it because i told you i said it's a standing peplum so when i'm done i'm gonna come back i'll couple it and come back to do the peplum part to show you how to do a standing pattern. Alright, see. You.